Imagine you're at your favorite coffee shop's online store, ready to check out with a hot cup of super coffee, a bag of bug hunter beans, and a triple stack of sandwiches. And you have a $10 gift card. As you proceed to check out, you enter your gift card code, and voila, $10 is promptly discounted from your total. You're feeling lucky today, and you try the code again, but no luck, you get an error message that this code has already been applied. But what if I told you that there is a glitch in the system that lets you apply your gift card multiple times. This means that your $10 gift card gets multiplied, reducing your total each time the coupon is applied. Suddenly, your $73 total becomes a negative balance. Yes, the coffee shop now owes you $17. Let's dive a bit deeper into what happens here. Under normal circumstances, when you redeem your gift card, the server processes your request and responds, OK, card redeemed. This acknowledgement should also come with an immediate update to the card's status marking it as used. Consequently, if you try to redeem the same gift card again, the server will deny the request. Now, let's consider the case where two requests to redeem the gift card are made at the same time. Both confirm that your gift card hasn't been applied to the cart yet. Consequently, they both apply the discount simultaneously. This is a classic example of a race condition. So what is a race condition? It is a system flaw that arises when the order of operations is critical to a task's correctness yet the system does not guarantee this sequence. Before we dive deeper, I want to acknowledge the basis for this video, the work Smashing the State Machine by James Kettle. I highly recommend you check out his talk. You can find a link to the resources in the description. Race conditions often stem from a specific type of flaw known as limit overrun, which is usually due to a type of concurrency issue. Concurrency on the web is typically managed by multiple threads handling requests and interfacing with a single, shared database. These conditions usually manifest through exploits, such as the previous gift card example. Other examples include transferring more money than you have, rating a product more than once, or bypassing security measures like anti-brute force mechanisms and captures. Let's dissect how a race condition unfolds within the interactions between a client, a server, and a database. First, the client sends a request to redeem a gift card to the server. The server then queries the database. Initially, the answer is false, meaning the gift card has not yet been used. Acting on this information, the server proceeds to apply the discount to the client's cart and marks the gift card as redeemed in the database. Any subsequent request to redeem the same code is denied since the database now registers the gift card as redeemed. This procedure introduces a race window. It's the period between the check is the gift card redeemed, and the action of setting the gift card status to redeemed. This race window is the vulnerable period that race conditions exploit. This is a classic time of check, time of use, or talk to issue. When the server asks the database if the gift card is redeemed is the time of check. This is where the race window opens. Time of use is when the server applies the discount and updates the database. Let's unpack the dynamics of the exploitation of such a race window. When the client attempts to redeem the same gift card code simultaneously, the server processes these requests by querying the database to determine if the card has already been used. Now, because these requests arrive almost simultaneously, the database is checked for the gift card status before either has been marked as redeemed. In both cases, the database returns false. The gift card has not been redeemed. This is where the race condition strikes. The server proceeds to apply the $10 discount for both requests because, according to its latest check, the gift card is valid. The server does not recognize that another request has also confirmed the validity of the same gift card and is applying the discount simultaneously. Finally, the server sends instructions to the database to set the gift card status to redeemed twice. This should not have been possible for a single use code. We have seen how multiple requests sent in parallel can cause unexpected outcomes. However, this comes with its own set of challenges. Three primary issues can affect the timing and synchronization of parallel requests. Network latency, network jitter, and internal latency. These factors can all influence whether two requests that were sent at the same time end up being processed simultaneously. Let's discuss a clever technique to synchronize requests. Last byte sync. Last byte sync is used within the context of HTTP 1.1, which does not natively support sending multiple requests in parallel over the same connection. With last byte sync, you construct parallel requests and send them off, holding back just the final byte. Each request is ready and waiting, but none can cross the finish line just yet. 
When all requests are queued up, you send the last byte for each request in quick succession. The aim is that these final bytes arrive at the server back to back, prompting the server to process the requests nearly simultaneously. With HTTP2, multiple HTTP requests can be sent over a single TCP connection concurrently. This is an improvement over the sequential request handling of HTTP 1.1 and opens up new vectors for potential race conditions. The single packet attack leverages this HTTP 2 feature to send a burst of concurrent requests. This approach effectively eliminates the variable of network jitter. The single packet attack is inspired by the last byte sync technique. Servers process requests when they consider them complete. What if we send the bulk of multiple requests holding back just a fragment of each. Finally, we release the withheld fragments in a single TCP packet. This strategy allows to synchronize the completion of 2030 requests in parallel. AlbinoWax benchmarked the two attacks by sending a bunch of requests halfway around the globe from Melbourne to Dublin, a journey spanning approximately 17,000 kilometers. The last byte sync method shows a median spread of 4 milliseconds with a standard deviation of 3 milliseconds. Respectable, but when we look at the single packet attack, the game changes. The median spread shrinks to a mere 1 millisecond with a minuscule standard deviation of 0.3 milliseconds. This shows that the single packet attack is significantly more precise, roughly 4 to 10 times more so, by these metrics. Every bug hunter knows that multi-step sequences are a treasure trove for vulnerabilities, and as AlbinoWax put it, with race conditions, everything is multi-step. State machines are abstract models that represent all the possible states of an interactive system and the transitions between those states. In the context of web applications, state machines manage things like user sessions, transactions, and data flows. To illustrate the concept of state machines, let's consider making a payment at an online store. After adding an item to your basket, you want to make a payment and your purchase gets confirmed. However, behind the scenes, the server is walking through its state machine, moving from basket pending to payment validation until the purchase is confirmed. This opens a race window while the server is validating your payment. So, while the payment is validated, you can slip another item into your basket. The server, busy with the payment validation, might not register this invalid addition. As the server transitions to purchase confirmed, our extra item slides through under the radar. You've now purchased more than the payment was originally validated for. This exploit takes advantage of the sub-states within the server's state machine. Let's look at how we can use these techniques in practice. Fortunately, Burp Suite Repeater has features that let you orchestrate requests to hunt for race conditions. First, you have to create a tab group by selecting a few requests. You can see here that my group was created. Now you can select the group send option next to the send button. With send group in sequence, you can either send the request over a single connection, which queues up your requests, or you can choose to send them in separate connections. Finally, you can choose the single packet attack. Depending on the HTTP protocol, Burp will adapt its strategy using last byte sync over HTTP 1 and the single packet attack over HTTP 2. Now it's time to look at a methodology to identify race conditions. It is a three-step process, predict, probe, and prove. Each step informs the next. If the probes don't provide proof, circle back, refine your predictions, and try again. The predict phase is about being selective and strategic. Your focus should be on those endpoints that can have a significant security impact if compromised. If an endpoint isn't handling sensitive actions or data, it might not be the best use of your time. Then. Assess the collision potential. Race conditions thrive on operations that could clash, those that act on the same data or resource. To illustrate the methodology, let's use an example where a confirmation email is sent to a user. Here we have a user who's been invited to a service. To send a confirmation email, a post request to confirm email is made. This results in a transition from the email confirmation pending state to the token generation state on the server side. The successful generation of the token should result in sending the confirmation email. In the next step, we will probe for clues. We begin with benchmarking. This step is all about establishing a performance baseline. For the confirm email operation, we're setting up a test where we send a series of confirmation requests in sequence. We set four different email addresses. These requests are queued up and ready to hit the server one after the other. The goal is to measure how the system handles multiple back-to-back -back requests. We find that each confirmation email is sent to a recipient that matches the user's email. Additionally, 
the user token matches the set email. After setting our benchmark with sequential requests, we now probe the system. This time we query the confirm email endpoint with the different email addresses in parallel. Now, we observe. We are looking for any deviation from the baseline we established during benchmarking. This might manifest as a discrepancy in the responses, an unexpected change within the email contents, or something offbeat in the user session. In this example, we again receive four confirmation emails. But we also observe that the recipients do not match the user tokens. For instance, user B receives the token for user D. Such an inconsistency could indicate a glitch in the state management. In the final stage, we attempt to prove impact of our previous discoveries. In our example, we send the parallel requests with half of the emails set to an address we control, and half of them to an admin of the site. As seen previously, we discover an irregularity. User A unexpectedly receives a token meant for the admin of the site. In this case, we would be able to confirm the admin account and possibly gain admin access to the site. And that, fellow hunters, is the Bug Hunter's Guide to Race Conditions. If this video helped you see race conditions in a new light, hit that like button. It helps more than you know. And if you're serious about staying ahead in the bug hunting game, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Until next time, stay curious, stay secure, and happy hacking.